Okay, now you're being recorded, so your movie stars again. Uh, I'll make it a point to post the video up uh, tomorrow uh, at midnight. So, everybody remember, like, share. Uh, good morning, this is the Slime Church of Christ, and this is our midweek Bible study. I, let's open with a prayer, please. God, we come before you at this time and we say thank you for the many blessings we have. We thank you for the food, for the clothing, for the jobs, for the health that we have. We are grateful, Lord, that no one in our group has been directly affected by the COVID virus. We ask, Lord, that this virus be removed from us so that we can return to our lives as we're used to them. We ask that you look after Pedro, that you restore him to well-being. We ask that you look after Lucy, help her to uh, obtain gainful employment. We ask that you look after Riza and Billy and their baby, and that they not be infected with the virus, even though it was very close to their house. Grant us strength, God, as we attempt to seek your will this day and each day of our lives. Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. We are in the process of studying the fruits of the Spirit. And fruit number five, or fruit number four, is the fruit of peace. Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind when we're studying about the fruits is that it is produced in the life of a Christian when he or she opens their hearts to be directed by God. The Spirit of God produces these fruits or this fruit only if the Christian is willing to listen to God's teaching and put them in practice in his or her life. This fruit is not forced upon anyone, nor is it given directly without, by the Spirit without the Christian doing his or her part. It's the same thing as salvation. Men play a part in saving themselves by having an obedient faith in Christ. Now, peace by some is said to be a fruit that comes into a Christian's life as they continue in obedient faith. Peace is the opposite of discord right, and dissension. Peace comes when there is unity and harmony. A soul in rebellion against God cannot have peace with God. Peace can only come when there is harmony between God and man. Now, three things are said about peace. Open your Bibles. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, please. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Rio. Yes. Uh, why don't you grab that for us? Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which is transcends or is beyond our understanding, guards our heart and our minds in Christ Jesus. Since we're already on Philippians 4, 7, Mary Kay, grab uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, please. Philipp uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and see in me, practice these things and God of peace will be with you. Peace, whatever is true, noble, right, 
lovely, admirable, anything that's excellent or praiseworthy, we focus on these things. When we're dealing with our brothers and sisters, how does that mean we should react to them? Focus on the good, right? Does everybody here know something bad? There's always something that irritates you about most people, right? Yes. Now, we can choose to focus on the things that are good, or we can choose to focus on the things that irritate us. And if we focus on the things that irritate us, what happens to our relationship with that person? Does it get better or worse? Worse. Worse. <laughs> right? So what we need to focus on are the things that are good, right? Focus on the things that are worthy, praiseworthy. Now, as long as we remain in Christ, we have a promise of this peace. The world around us is filled with deceptive teaching, temptations, mistakes, errors, fears, and the such. Those that are desiring, they desire entrance into our hearts and thoughts. With Christ in our hearts, these things cannot gain an interest. If we fill our minds with the proper things and we think on and we focus on the proper things, <coughs> bad things cannot gain a foothold in our mind. And psychologists have done an examination. Do you know what happens when you get angry? Your body gets a shot of dopamine. Dopamine is a hormone that makes you feel good. You ever notice how it seems that on Facebook, everybody seems to be fighting? There's lots of arguments. You know why? Because they get that dopamine charge. So we as Christians have to make it a point to try and avoid these things. Now, not all peace is the peace that the Spirit of God produces in our lives. Who is called the Prince of Peace? Bring up Isaiah 9, 6, please. Isaiah 9, 6. Is it me? Me? Oh, yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. In relation to peace, what is the name of Jesus Christ? What is the name of? The Prince of Peace, right? However, the Prince of Peace made it very clear that he did not come to bring a false peace. He knew that his teachings would not bring peace to every person or every home. Prayer a sword. Chrissy, Matthew, 1034, please. Mm -hmm. 34. Yeah. Matthew 10.34 Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a story. Is Jesus Christ going to bring peace to every relationship? No. And Jesus Christ told us that, right? Yes. It, He's go in some cases, he's not going to bring peace. He's not offering 
peace through the compromise of the truth. Jesus was not like those people who cried, peace, peace, when there really was no peace. Rio, Jeremiah 6.14, please. Jeremiah 6.14. Jeremiah 6.14 They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. Is Jesus Christ going to bring us peace when there really is no peace? And the answer is no. But he does offer the true peace with God and our fellow man. As Christians, we are encouraged to live peaceably with all men. Mary Fay, Romans 12, 18, please. Sure. Romans 12, 18. Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, leave peaceably with all. We should live peaceable, peaceably with all people as long as it depends on us, right? However, Jesus adds that if it is possible and it depends on us, mm -hmm. there are some people that make such peace hard. Katrina, Psalm 127, please. Psalm. Psalm 127. I am for peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Now, if you are for peace, but somebody else is for war. Can you have peace with them? Come on, guys. If you want to make peace with somebody, but they want to fight you, can you have peace? No, right? And that takes us back to Romans chapter 12. As long as it's up to you, as long as you are the person who holds the cards or who holds the control, make mm -hmm. peace. But some people, it's not going to happen. In another sense of the word, Jesus Christ coming brought peace both to the Jew and the Gentile. But only to those who are in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. Real? Uh, sorry, Christian. Ephesians 2, 13. Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far, far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 14. For he himself is our peace who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of his hostility. Okay. So what's happened to the Jews and the Gentiles who are both in Jesus Christ? A, the wall between them, the wall of hostility, is gone, right? They can now live at peace with each other. This peace is a reconciliation. Mm -hmm. The gospel is called a message of peace. Rio, Ephesians 6 15, please. Ephesians 6 15. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ephesians 6 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of, say it with me, the gospel of peace. peace. 
right? Mary Faith, Acts chapter 10, verse 36. Acts 10, verse 36. So Acts chapter 10, verse 36. After the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Preaching good news of, say the word, peace. Right? So as long as we have the gospel, we are trying to have peace, to have love for our other, for other people. Now the psalmist stated that there is peace that is given to those who meet a condition. Read up. 119, 165, please. Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. We want peace with God. How do we get it? Ob obeying God's law. Obeying God's law. We have to obey God's law, right? Yes. Now, as men, as mankind, we are no longer enemies with God because He has made His peace, made His peace possible for us with Him in His. We have to turn away from our disobedience to become an obedient servant of God. Now, once we've made our peace with God through obedience to the gospel, is we are then expected to live at peace with all men. Hebrews 12, 14, please. 1214. Hebrews 12:14. Make every airport worthy in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Hebrews 1214 says we are to make every effort to live at peace. Let me see. What does it say? With some people? No. Everyone. With everyone. However, we are to be holy because if we're not holy, no one gets to see the Lord. Right? Yes. 1 Thessalonians 5.13. Real. Come again. 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 13. 513. 1 Thessalonians 5, 13. And to esteem that very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. We are commanded all right? Yes. Um, Mary Frank, Romans 12, 18, please. Romans 12, 18. Romans 12, 18, did you get that already? Oh, yes, I had read it. <laughs> okay. Read it again for me, please. Romans 12, 18? Yes, please. Yes. Romans 12, a, uh, verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. 
to live peaceably with certain? All. Oh. All. Most. All. Oh. All, right? As yes. long as it's up to us, right? Depends on us. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 4 3. Katrina? Ephesians 4 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Now, we want to have unity, right? Yes. And we want to have unity of the Spirit. We are commanded to do that, aren't we? Yes, we are. Now, we as Christians are also commanded or called to become peacemakers amongst our fellow men. And a good way to find this is to look right in the middle of the Beatitudes. Uh, Chrissy, grab Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, please. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Want to be a child of God? Yes. yes. We want to be a child of God. What must we do? Try to be peacemakers. peacemakers. Right? So, you want the fruit of the Spirit? We're going to get it. Uh, Rio, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11, please. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. guile. Let him school evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. So we should seek peace and pursue it, right? Yes. And going back to verse 10, whoever would love life and see good days, must do what? Keep their tongue from evil. Refrain his tongue from evil. Their tongue. From evil. From evil. Okay. Uh, as you know, that we spoke about it Sunday during Bible study. Is the tongue an easy thing to control? No. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Is your, tongue, is your tongue easy to control? Is it, is it easy to control? In control? Yeah, is it control. easy to control your tongue? No. No. Not always, right? Yes. And I didn't hear Mary Fay say anything. You've got yours under control all the time? No, I sometimes, no. <laughs> I sometimes do something bad. <laughs> Okay. By the way, we're going to borrow this from Sunday's lesson because, as you heard me say before, Genesis to Revelation is all one story. The salvation of man to the through Jesus Christ to the glory of God the Father, right? Yes. Um, by the way, what is the Greek word for gossip? Gossip? Yes. We spoke, you missed it on Sunday. <laughs> last Sunday, that was last Sunday. Gossip. I, don't know. I forgot. <laughs> you forgot? The abelos. Ah, you know, the abelos. The abelos. So if you're a chess boss, I guess what you are? <laughs> the abelos. The abelos. I don't want that attributed to me, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me see where we are. Okay. Now, we are peacemakers. Give me Romans 14, 19, please. Romans 14, 19. C 
Who are gonna read? Patrio. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Romans fourteen nineteen. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. After we should follow after the things that make edify another. What is it us from our efforts to live peaceably with God and man in godly love? Somebody grab uh, Rio. Sorry, not Rio. Uh, Rio just got done. Mary Faye. Mary Faye. I, I know the name. Give me. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 38, please. 22. 37. Matthew 22, 37 and 38. And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Guess what? Good morning, Sister Doe. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. You're muted. Good morning. Unmute yourself. Okay. They're good. Oh, you're, you're mute. Matthew 2239, please. Oh, you got here so you can read it. <laughs> Sister Doe, Matthew, Matthew. twenty two thirty seven and thirty eight. Twenty two thirty seven? Yes, Paul. Thirty nine. 39. 39. Okay. 39. Love your neighbor as yourself. As you love yourself. Let them go first. Romans 13 10. Somebody grab it. Romans 13 10. Romans 13 10. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Neighbor, right? Who's our neighbor? Who is our neighbor? Everyone. Everyone, right? We have to do our best to live in peace, right? Yes. God's love is concerned with the welfare of other people. He is even willing to put his own interest in a second place in order to keep peace. Both Abraham and Isaac gave us an example of what it means for this kind of peace. Genesis 13, 8, Rio. Again. Genesis 13, verse 8. 13. What book again? Sorry. Genesis. Genesis. 13, 8? Yes. 13, 8. Genesis 13, 8. And Abraham said, said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. For we be brethren. Let there be no strife. 
Let there be no argument, right? By the way, I don't know if, uh, let's go back and look at that text a little more, and I'm going to explain that he said, if you want to go east, I will go west. But if you want to go west, I will go east. You choose. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it didn't work out so well for Lot and his wife, as we know later on, Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lot chose the area where there were cities, probably because he liked cities, right? Yes. All right, Genesis 26, 22, please, Mary Kay. Genesis 26, 22. And he moved from there to another well, and they did not quarrel over it, so he called its name Rehoboth. Yes. Saying, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. So we have an example both from Abraham and Isaac, right? Where they put other people ahead of themselves. The Apostle Paul, in his letters to the church at Corinth, told the people to be willing to suffer wrong in order to keep the peace. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7. Go. Chapter 6, verse 7. Ngayon na kilala isang pagkukulang sa inyo ang pagkukulang sa inyo ang kayo-kayo'y magkaroon ng mga usapin. Bakit hindi bagkos ninyong tiisin ang mga kalikuan? Bakit hindi bagkos kayo'y padaya? Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated than to fight? That's hard teaching that the Apostle is giving us, isn't it? Because as human nature, if you do me wrong, how, what's my human nature tell me I'm supposed to do? That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to be willing, eager, even sometimes, to do that, right? But that's not the instructions the Apostle Paul gave, is it? Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? And look, the truth is, Scripture is what Scripture is. And if we were capable of living 100%, then we would already be perfect, right? The way we maintain our peaceful relationship with God is to continue to walk in the light of God's truth. Katrina, first John one seven, please. First John one seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. Good morning, Rizal. How are you? Unmute yourself. Good morning. Good morning. You okay this morning? Yes, I do. Hi, Sister Rizal. No problem. Uh, if we walk in the light and he is the light, we have what? Fellowship with one another. That's important, right? Rizal, grab First John chapter 3, verse 7, please. First John three. <laughs> First John three seven. Let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. If we are righteous, what we do, what is right, correct? Yes. We do the things that God wants us to do. Yes. We are righteous before God by doing right. 
there's nothing wrong. Now this, back up a second. This does not mean that you or I will be perfect and without sin in our life. But it does give an emphasis on the direction that we should be walking. If we are to maintain peace with God by living righteous, it would seem that by the same walk, we can be at peace with other men. Who will allow us to be at peace? The instructions given by the Apostle Paul would certainly help for peace when he instructs us to pray for men. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, please. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Mary Faye. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Tama. 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 First of all, then I urge that supp supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. What I'm getting ready to say. You are angry at someone and you pray for them. Can you be angry at them still? No. No. As, as I'm seeking the best for the person who maybe did me wrong, that are the Corinthians by Paul, I start seeking good things for them. I'm no longer angry. If I'm no longer angry, I now have peace. Right? Yes. Yes. So we want peace for not just us, but for all people. We are called and told to be peacemakers, Matthew chapter 5, right? Living in peace requires that we deal properly with timing also. Uh, there's a joke that's told in the States. Uh, men have a short memory. Women have a very long memory. Uh, you can be walking through the grocery store, and all of a sudden, your wife hits you in the head. Ben, what was that for? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand the joke? Yes. We are commanded by God that we should let past things be past. The things that are behind us mm -hmm. should be behind us. Sister Doe, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, please. Philippians 3, verse 13. Hindi ko pa inaaring inabot Datapat isang bagay ang ginagawa ko na nililimot ang mga bagay na nasa likuran at tinutungo ang mga bagay na hinaharap. So the things that are behind us should remain in the front, right? Is that what it says? It says the things that are behind us should remain behind us. Putting behind what is behind and pressing on towards what is coming. Yes. yes. It is a necessity. Sins, mistakes, wrongs, errors, faults in the past must be put behind us. We can't hold a grudge forever. Yes. We do what we can make those mistakes that are behind us and go on with our lives. God remembers them against us no more. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 8, 
verse 12. Real? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. No, 8, 12. 8, 12. Sorry. Hebrews. <laughs> Very good. Balik <laughs> 8, 12. Am I correct? Hebrews 8, 12. Yes. Yes. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. Will I remember no more? Now, isn't that what we're hoping for? That God will forgive our wickedness, our sins, and remember them no more? No more. However, if we want God to put our sins behind us, what must we do with those who anger us, who are unfair to us? Okay, we have to be willing to forgive other people. Yes. If we go back to the example of prayer, and it says, God, forgive us our trespasses as I repeat, forgive those who trespass against me, right? No, it doesn't say that. It says that we're supposed to forgive those, ask for forgiveness, forgive me my trespasses as I forgive others, right? Yes. So we should extend that forgiveness, that willingness to live for Christ. Blessed is the man whose sins have been forgiven. Romans chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, please. Graham? Romans 4, 7. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. So our sins are behind us, and God has given us forgiveness, right? So we're not supposed to worry after we've asked for forgiveness about the sin that is behind us, correct? We should also not worry about what's ahead. Matthew 6, 31, 32, please, Chrissy. Matthew 6, 31. Matthew 6, 31. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans. 32. 32, for the pagans, run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So, we should, heard me soon before, let go and thank God, right? We have to have faith that allows us to not worry about the things that are behind us. And to trust God and not worry about the things that are in front of us. And we're going to have peace. The only time that we really have is the present, is right now. So we need to live today if our future is secure, because it is. Matthew 6, 33 and 34, please. Mary Fay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. Um, but he says, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What does it say? Sufficient for today is the trouble of today. Today. Right? Everybody's life has problems every day. So we have to make each day count so that we can look back on today with 
pleasure. Herein is the peace that surpasses all understanding and will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Brazil? Philippians 4, 4, four six, and seven. 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always ask him, him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. God, and we can have the peace understand right? what is the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is peace peace confidence peace security peace living without a lot of fighting carrying on with our friends our neighbors our co-workers right 